Hello, I'm Megan Headley. Welcome to the first broadcast of the USGNN monthly newscast sponsored by US Glass Magazine. We'll start with this month's top stories. Of course, the story on everyone's mind is the current state of the economy. Commercial construction has begun feeling the impact and that's translating into job losses across the board. According to a report released last week by the U.S. Department of Labor's Bureau of Labor Statistics, the construction industry accounted for 15 percent of mass layoffs during November, and employment continued to decline in this sector by more than 100,000 in December. To give us an idea of what's expected further along in 2009, I spoke recently with Bob Murray, Vice President of Economic Affairs with McGraw-Hill Construction. Bob has said that in 2008, commercial building was still showing increases, but in 2009 that will not be the case. Several non-residential building sectors are expected to be especially hard hit. Uh, certainly the category that's been the most severely hit to, to this point would be the retail sector, uh, stores and shopping centers. Um, the office sector, which seemed to be avoiding the overbuilding of the past, is uh, become increasingly vulnerable just given the, the state of the economy and the loss of jobs. Uh, hotels, which have been holding up quite well, is due for a very substantial uh, decline in 2009, which will continue into 2010. We're all becoming fairly accustomed to these gloom and doom forecasts, but Bob also had recommendations for the best places to look for bright spots of continuing non-residential construction in 2009. I think in terms though, of really kind of keying on areas of uh, opportunity in 2009, uh, some help might be given by the priorities that have been coming forth in the stimulus package. Uh, there's talk about upgrading or making federal buildings more energy efficient. And certainly there's talk about uh, trying to make uh, the, the housing stock in the United States more energy efficient, which would involve, of course, uh, you know, heightened demand for, for glass replacement. Now, obviously, the glass industry is already feeling the brunt of slowing commercial construction as we reported numerous plant closings over the past month. PPG has been in the news for several months regarding its closings. The latest of these was the shutdown of the production line in Mount Zion, Illinois, on December 31st, moving up a closure that had originally been planned for the spring of 2009. The closure eliminated a total of 75 jobs at the plant. On January 5th, AGC Flat Glass laid off another 34 people at its Greenland plant in Tennessee, although these layoffs were remnants of the downsizing measures the company instituted as part of its restructuring this past April. On January 7th, Old Castle Glass closed its plant in Louisville, Kentucky. A letter to customers noted the existing and confirmed orders will be shipped from the company's Indianapolis and Perrysburg, Ohio facilities. Alcoa, the parent company of Conair, is looking at reductions that include cutting back the number of employees by 13,500, or 13% 13 of the company's worldwide workforce, by the end of this year. Viracon issued a statement on January 12th confirming that it had laid off approximately 200 positions at its facility in Awatonna, Minnesota, or 15% of its Awatonna workforce. The company did, however, note that while it had idled three production facilities for brief periods of time, all lines are currently running full-time Monday through Friday. The news isn't all grim. For example, in Pompano Beach, Florida-based Glass Slam has opened a new plant in Freeport, Grand Bahama Island, where it will be manufacturing its airtight insulating glass foam spacer. The company has begun providing samples and taking orders. CEO Steve Howe says the company plans to sell its products worldwide from the new facility. In fact, savvy glass companies are taking such news as warnings to plan on ways to protect themselves during the years ahead. Industry consultant Paul Bieber has just such a few recommendations on things glass companies can do to get through this economic downturn. In these tough economic times, it's important for glass companies to look at every avenue they have to save money. The first thing I would look at is reducing the number of vendors that you have. It is by far less expensive to deal with two or three vendors than eight or nine vendors. You save money in your receiving, you save money in your accounts payable, and by concentrating your purchasing dollars, you will get better pricing from the vendors you work with. The best way to gain business in a tough economic time is to work with your existing current customers. Spruce up your showroom. When a customer is waiting for a piece of glass for a picture frame or maybe a windshield installation, if they see a sharp, clean, neat showroom with signs that say, buy windows here or we can reduce your energy cost, you have a customer in hand. Let them buy from you rather than trying to spend money 
to dig up new customers. In times like this with a lot of layoffs, uh, the good news is that there are a lot of good employees who have been let go from their jobs through no fault of their own. They, being good employees, are looking for work. Take this as an opportunity to review your workforce and trade up. Get better employees who want to work rather than the person you've been saying, well, they'll get better, they'll get better, and are just hanging on. Clean out your trucks at your job. If you have 500 pounds of extra scrap glass in the garbage cans on the back of your trucks, you're wasting one to two miles per gallon in the cost of your fuel. Work safely. If your shop is clean and neat, you will be safe, which will reduce your workers' comp potential liabilities. And if your shop is neat and clean, your workers will work more efficiently. They will spend less time looking for product in your shop, and they will get more done. Don't believe in the big order that's going to walk in the door just because you get an email. Customer fraud is increasing, especially in tough economic times, because we all want that big order, and it's tempting when something comes in. If it looks like it's too good to be true, the odds are it is. Never, ever pay money up front to somebody you don't know, saying that they will get you an order. For more ideas, many suppliers and glazing contractors are making plans to attend the annual conference of the Building Envelope Contractors Division of the Glass Association of North America. For more on this upcoming event, we turn to Holly Biller. Thanks, Megan. Glazing contractors looking for ideas on how to differentiate themselves will consider the GANA BEC Conference a worthwhile investment. The BEC Conference is coming up February 15th through the 17th and will be hosted at the Palms Hotel in Las Vegas. Last year, more than 700 attendees participated in the event. Because the conference is hosted in conjunction with Glass Week, where GANA members meet in order to discuss new initiatives, glazing contractors have an opportunity to meet with their suppliers as well as their peers. In fact, the BEC conference is renowned for its networking opportunities as well as its educational programs. This year, attendees already are anticipating a presentation from Russell Huffer, CEO of Apogee Enterprises, on how green building and energy will affect the contract glazer. We take this very seriously uh, in our company, uh, uh, the green movement, mm -hmm. and, and I like to call it green squared. Quite frankly, I think it's, it's, it's green in its movement, it's green in the money that it can make for us. And, I, and I've challenged our people as we look at uh, uh, these uh, products that we're developing and how we run our businesses, that we need to look at them from a point of view of eco the economic impact they have. Don't do something just because it's green. Do it because it's green squared. Also, Russ Eby, CEO of Guardian Glass, will be on hand to discuss the state of the glass and glazing industry. For an extra treat, sports legend Dick Vermeil will present the seven common sense principles of leadership. I know I'm looking forward to that. How about you, Megan? Thanks, Holly. I know I look forward to seeing a number of our viewers out there in Las Vegas. And on next month's broadcast, we're sure to have plenty of updates from both BEC and Glass Week. Thanks for watching. Be sure to look for those updates and many more on our next USGNN newscast, February 23rd, when we'll be bringing the news straight to your screen once more.